Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial, my guide here on how to use the math functions for movement. And I'm not going to get into, we're not going to get into like really complex math. I'm not going to explain the functions and everything. What I'm going to do though is show you, there's a couple of bookmarks I have here, a couple of links. Um, one of them is this, which explains the math function and goes into a little more detail of what they are doing. And the other one is this, it's a graphing calculator guide here where we can actually put the function here and kind of see what it's doing. And for now, I'm just leaving everything on the default except for I did change the prompt a bit to a country road. Yeah, so I have a beautiful country road by Asher Brown Duran, etc. And I have put it to animation mode 3D. And I'm just doing 200 frames here. What I'm going to do here first is just go ahead and leave this default movement on and kind of show you what it does. It should kind of zigzag kind of rapidly back and forth and then I'm going to show you how we can actually look at that function in that graph and kind of visually see what it's doing which should make it a little bit easier for us to modify and use this in our movements and again I am using 3d mode animation right now okay and it looks like we are up and running so I'm going to go ahead and let this run and then when it come when it finishes I'll come back and show you the video and then kind of show you the graph and explain what's going on there Hey guys, I just wanted to check in here too and show you one other feature of the new notebook is it shows the movement keys while it's generating the frames here. So if you notice this one right here, this TX, this is the left and right movement and you can see it's it's varying between um, negative 10 and 10. So right now it's at negative 5. For the X value there, that's translation X is what the T stands for. Now it's at negative 9. And so that's what that math function does there. It's gonna, it's just gonna fluctuate kind of a wave function between negative 10 and 10, I believe. I have it punched in here. Yeah, so this is the function right now that we're using for this. And that is the one that is the default that is entered right here. So what I did here though, I just copied this part of it for that graphing calculator page, because it doesn't know what the zero is. This is just part of the keyframe for the Notebook doesn't have anything to do with the math equation. So I plugged that in here and then I just added a y equal to the front of it. And then it lets you see that function here in the graph. And so down here we've got negative 10 and up here 10. So that's what that's doing. That's changing that number value for x between negative 10 and 10. And since 10 or since um, x is our left and right movement, it's going to uh, zigzag left and right. And it's just about done here, about 40 more frames. So I'll go ahead and check back in. I just wanted to point that out. You can actually see the movement keys being changed now. Okay, the video is winding down here. Let's go ahead and run this. So I made this tutorial with the intent that you don't really need to understand the math. I'm just going to kind of show you how we can use that graph to kind of change it and manipulate it without really understanding the wave function. And here is our video. And you can see there it's zigzagging left and right in pretty short turns. That actually looks kind of cool. Well, it kind of seems to be angling upwards for some reason, even though we didn't do anything with that. So that's what this wave function is doing. So what we can do here, and th this is applied. I kind of like that beginning part, really. That, that looked kind of cool. Let's go rewind that. Yeah, that part. Too bad it didn't stay on the road there. So what we can do here, I've already entered this um, function into the graph calculator here. And again, I just put a y equals. So we can see here the graph. It's going between 10 and negative 10, 10 and negative 10. So what we can do here, you can see also it's kind of short. So we can do, we can first let's um, give it a little bit less. Let's do a three. So now it's just going to be fluctuating between three and negative three. See when we change that first part of the function. And then we can also stretch it out a bit by making this number bigger. So we can do that and get a much more kind of a, a su more subtle flow. And I don't know if this is going to be too much, if we'll even notice it. Let's start off maybe with just 50. Okay, so let's try this. So now that we've got our modified function here, I'm just going to copy this. And get back into the notebook here, and we're just going to replace it up here. But we don't want to replace the zero. Remember, that part is specific to the notebook, so it wasn't entered in there. So we're going to enter our new formula here. 
Okay, so what I did too is I just typed it in here. I didn't copy and paste it because it had a problem um, recognizing, I guess, the syntax from the calculator. Basically, so here's my formula now. I just changed that 10 to a 3 and that 10 to a 50 right there. So I put a 3 there and a 50 there. And that should give it more of a kind of a gradual slope and a little bit less of a zigzag motion. So I'm going to go ahead and let this render and then we'll come check on it when it's done. 1.1, yeah. So this should be a lot more gradual and it won't get above 3 or below negative 3. So we've just narrowed the range a little bit and made it a little more subtle as you can see this. So this is the one, the second number here is the one we did to increase the distance between the peaks. So if you turn this number up, like if you turn it up to 100, you can make it real subtle. So we just changed that. And then this was the number for the the range of the peak. So at 10, it goes up to 10 and negative 10. So if you change this to 3 like I did, then it's only going to go up to 3 and down to 3. So see, you don't really need to use math to use this. You can just figure out and there i'm sure there's all kinds of wave functions we can punch in here um, it also talks there's this guide as well that talks about the supported functions and i'll include this as well and kind of shows for those of you who know this stuff already um, i'm sure you can come up with some really complex math functions especially when you consider you can use the keyframes and and change it for the keyframes you can also you know just use the regular keyframes as well like we could do a comma um, keyframe 50 and then just do a normal three, you know, somewhere. So you could just use these for part of your animation. If you'd like, there's, this just adds a lot of possibilities. So it's a great new tool here to have. So I'll go ahead and let this run and we'll come and see how um, this new equation turns out. Okay, everybody. And this is starting to wind down. And here again is how this function looked in the graphing calculator here. It fluctuates between negative three and three. And we gave it a little bit more of a more subtle range as well. Let's go ahead and run this and see how this one looks. Let's go ahead and look at the original first again. So we can see it's kind of zigzagging left and right there fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and see how this new one looks. Okay, and here's our new one. Okay, so we can see it's going left and right. It's still moving left and right, but a lot more, a lot more subtly, not quite as rapid yeah that movement doesn't look too bad it looks like our, our forward zooms a little bit fast too let's go ahead and turn that down for next experiment actually you know what we could do too so you don't have to use this on we can use this for any of these um, movement keys we could actually change this to the zoom as well let's go ahead and try that so I'm just gonna copy and cut this here real quick and we'll go ahead and replace our Z with it okay and then we're gonna just put we'll just put a zero for our left and right and let's kind of see what what this kind of does to the zoom this should it'll it's gonna go in and it's going to zoom forward and backwards quite a bit, so it might get kind of dizzy here. But I'm, I'm just kind of showing how you can use these in any of these functions. We could do it for the rotation, too. And well, let's just go ahead and see how this is on the forward function. Okay, and we're off. And we can go ahead and look at that video still. It's still playing. So you see it's kind of moving left and then right. Then left again. So what this is going to do now that we've put it in the Z is it's going to do the same thing because it's basically just changing the value constantly. So this can kind of save you from having to enter a whole bunch of keyframes. You know, if you just want some movement in your animation, but you don't want to make, you know, 20 keyframes, you can just put one of these math functions in there so that it's it's doing something besides just going forward. And there's nothing wrong with animations just going forward. It actually kind of handles those really well. But let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see how this turns out. It might be really bad. We will find out. Okay, and this is winding down, and this should basically just kind of stay in the same place and kind of go back and forth a bit. And there is our old one again. Let's go ahead and render this out. So my goal here is really just to kind of show you how you can use these and kind of modify them a little bit with that graphing calculator. That's a really good way to kind of see what your wave is going to look like, even if you don't know math. 
you can you know just learn to adjust those numbers and kind of make it a bigger or lesser range yeah so this one's basically zooming in and out if you notice it's changing quite a bit but zooming forward and backwards and so this might be kind of a cool one you can just throw in you know for a certain part of the animation that kind of thing so these this math function is a great tool it you know, it, I think it'll make it a lot easier to kind of render movement in your animation. Let's go ahead and just do something for the heck of it. Let's just kind of do something fun here. And let's go back to, let's just go grab our function here. Again, we just want this part of it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and load it in here. And we need to put y equals here to be able to see it. And there is our wave. So let's go ahead and actually, we'll just go ahead and use this as is right here. Oh, I did have some problems before when I copied it, so I don't know if it's just the way that it's written in there, but let's see if we get this again. I'll go ahead and put this back in that X again. I can just take out the backslash now that I know what it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to run the skin just to make sure that was the issue. Yep, okay, so I've put that for our left and right movement. And then let's go ahead and go to the graphing calculator and tweak it again a bit. Let's do... So this is the range. So this will give a bigger fluctuation between 3 and negative 3. Let's do a 5 there. And then let's do this a little bit narrower. So the bigger this number is the more gradual the changes will be the smaller this one is here after the t slash the more rapid they will be let's do a 20 and we're just going to use this one just for a little while and we don't need that y equals okay i'm going to put this one here into one of these rotations here let's go ahead and put it in there but first action we're going to do is we're going to have it not kick in until like the very end we'll put it at 150 well yeah and this is another thing too just as a refresher so if i did something like this like i put a one here so it's keyframe zero zero keyframe 151 what it will do is gradually change from zero to one over 150 keyframes so if you want it to stay zero through 150 um, i think you can just start it at 150 zero i don't know if you need to put that first one in but this is how you do it you put zero zero there so it's just going to stay at zero until it gets to 150 and then at 151 now it's going to do the change okay and we're going to put that in there and we want to get rid of that backslash okay and then we'll just let it we'll just let it finish out like that and let's go back here and do some more changes now let's do That one's real gradual there. You can see we could even put that to where it's barely noticeable. Let's do, let's just do a 50 for this one. And then let's turn the range up a little bit. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead and copy this somewhere. And let's do this at keyframe 100. So I'll put 99. And then what else we'll do, we'll uh, have it slowly go from this wave function to zero. So I'm going to put keyframe 150. So what this is going to do is it's going to do the wave function gradually decrease until it's zero, though. So it's going to make the wave function less and less subtle as it goes on. So let's go ahead and just run this now. Um, let me see. It's our zoom speed. We do need a little bit of movement, though. Let's slow that down just a bit. We'll just do a 1.1. Uh, 1. We'll just kind of do a slow movement. And let me see. What about our cadence? Let's turn that cadence up a bit. There it is. Let's turn that way up, actually. I should have had this up. This makes it work a lot better. But we'll go ahead and put that up at 6. Okay, let's see how this one turns out. Let me see if I forgot anything. I think this should be all right. 
So I think that with that formula, this really gives us a lot of control. So we can have like kind of a smaller range there, like from negative five to five, or we can put 10 there, and this will give us a range from 10 to negative 10. And then this controls the frequency of it. So the lower this number is, the more often it's going to fluctuate. So like right here, we have it just jumping up and down a lot. So we probably don't want that. So we can put that to 20 or 50, you know, make it just a real gradual one that's barely even noticeable too. We could like probably put this up to a thousand. And then, yeah, you see how that goes up. And so if you have a real long animation, this would just give it some really slow movements. And you can plug this in into any of those parameters here. Like I was showing, you can plug that into the forward movement, the Z, you can plug it into the rotation, wherever you want. So we'll kind of see how this one looks. And uh, it'd also do the same thing with the 2D. And the 2D mode also does now have these that kind of simulate the rotations in the 3D mode. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this one run, and we'll come check on it when it's done and see how this movement looks. This should be interesting. Okay, and here is our animation, and it looks like this one is going to get way out of hand here. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and make it here and see what kind of a mess we've made here. There we go. doesn't start off too bad. It's kind of moving back and forth there. There we go. That up and down gets a little severe. Okay, so that so the, anyways, this is how the math function works. You know, I wasn't trying to make real good ones here. I was just kind of showing you how to use it. And you can also use this graphing calculator tool, you know, to kind of turn that formula down and make a more subtle one. I really think this wave function here, though, that's in there is a really good one. You know, that that's a good one to kind of make kind of subtle changes. And it can kind of cut back on making a whole bunch of keyframes if you just want to throw in there random. So I hope this tutorial is helpful. I probably will revisit this at some point if I go and discover some more math equations to pump in here. I'm going to do that. Um, I don't know how, how often or how long, but I'm going to keep experimenting with this. And if I do come up with some good movement keys, I will probably post another tutorial there. But I think the wave function is probably going to be the most useful one here, you know, where we can just have kind of a nice fluctuation of numbers there. Okay, so thank you all for watching. I will be making some more tutorials soon as well. Um, with some of these other areas here in the new deform and you all have a great rest of your day.